from late winter all the way in to the middle of the summer heat, ponds like this one, Carolina Bay wetlands, fill with the sounds of frogs. Imagine this little wetland behind me here with hundreds of frogs calling during the breeding season with a cacophony of noise. That's pretty much the situation we have going on in this pond, especially as the sun starts to go down. Well, hundreds and hundreds of frogs use these wetlands. As a matter of fact, Carolina bays are probably our most important breeding habitat for amphibians in South Carolina. What makes them such great places for frogs? The answer has to do with the hydrology. Carolina bays make good frog habitat because they make really poor fish habitat. You see, most Carolina bays are what we term isolated wetlands that have fluctuating hydrology. And that means that the water levels don't stay constant. So typically, during the winter time, they'll fill up with water. And then in dry summers, when we don't have a lot of late afternoon thunderstorms, they'll dry down, sometimes drying out completely. And when they dry out completely, fish can't survive. So isolated wetlands with fluctuating hydrology means no fish, and where better to lay your eggs, raise your young, have those tadpoles grow up than in a place without one of the main predators, fish. Not only are there hundreds of individual frogs, in bays like this, but the diversity of frogs here is higher than in any other habitat. Matter of fact, right here in South Carolina, we've documented 25 species of frogs breeding in Carolina bays. Even here in the South Carolina Botanical Garden in our leaky pond, we've documented 12 breeding species. It's easy to see why Carolina bays make such great frog habitat, but there's still some mystery behind these places because you see, we're not really exactly sure how they were formed.